Thank you so much to the New York staff and Anne for that unplanned edition of the Canadian. I'm sure that felt really good. <laughs> good evening and welcome everyone, and uh, thanks for coming to the Canadian staff Band's Fall Festival in their 49th year. I uh, thank all those fans and followers of the Canadian Staff Band and uh, hope that you'll follow us during the 49th year and watch our website and our Facebook page for some upcoming really exciting announcements about the 50th year. But uh, we want to uh, live in the present, so welcome to tonight. I want to recognize the presence of our Territorial Commander here tonight, Commissioner Susan McMillan, and Chief Secretary Colonel Lee Graves, and the Ontario Central East Divisional Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Sandra Rice. Thanks for being here. Also want to recognize uh, Recognized from International Headquarters, Commissioner Robert Donaldson, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you all for uh, being here tonight. I hope you came uh, to hear bands. I uh, hope that's what you're here for, because that's what you'll hear. Uh, it's going to be a great night of music and a great opportunity for fellowship, and we're really grateful to all of you for coming. Uh, we want, uh, right from the beginning, to ask you to greet those who are on the platform. First of all, Canadian Staff Band under the, band, the leadership of Bandmaster John Lamb, and also the New York Staff Band, our special guests under the direction of Bandmaster Derek Lance, with our Executive Officer, Lieutenant Colonel James Labossier. Uh, let's welcome them all, please. much to be grateful for. Uh, we are so grateful that you were here this weekend, last night at London Citadel, tonight here, tomorrow morning at Bloor Central Corps, and then the big parade, so uh, and hopefully your flight home will make good at uh, the end of that. But thanks so much for being here. We're grateful uh, for your presence, for your music, for who you are, uh, and for uh, being here tonight. To We're so really grateful for that. And I'm sure all of us know that there's so much in our own lives that we have to be grateful for. So please join me as we pray and give thanks to God. God, we do give thanks with grateful hearts tonight because you're a great God. And uh, you are the creator, preserver, and governor of all things. And you're sovereign over all things. And you desire to live within our lives. And we're grateful for that. We're grateful for the blessings that you bestow upon us every day. We thank you for the gifts that are ours. We thank you for the blessings of living in the countries that are ours. And the freedoms that we have. And we pray, God, that you'll help us to continually give thanks. To have grateful hearts for who you are and what you do in our lives. And that we would then respond in gratitude by offering our lives to, to you. So we pray tonight that uh, the bands and their music, their instruments, their lives, the audience, that we all, God, would offer ourselves to you as living sacrifices, that we might worship you, uh, not only tonight, but tomorrow and every day of our lives, that we might give our all to you, that you might lead us and guide us and fill us with your presence. And for that, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name.
The psalmist wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And on behalf of Band Master Derek Lance and the men and women of the New York Staff Band, I want to express how glad we are to be here tonight to share in this fall festival with our brothers and sisters from the Canadian Staff Band. It's a privilege and an honor for us to be here tonight. Most recently, we hosted uh, in the Eastern Territory. The uh, Canadian Staff Band joined us on our Old Orchard Beach camp meetings with Commissioner McMillan. It was a wonderful weekend. And we are blessed by that and so glad we could share in fellowship here tonight with each of you. The next piece that the staff band is going to play, the New York staff band is going to play, is entitled Streamlined. And it's the first of two pieces that were written by Marcus Venables. It's a brand new cornet duet featuring the song, I've Got Peace Like a River. And tonight, we'll be blessed to have uh, this duet feature Marcus Venables from the Canadian staff band and Brindley Venables from the New York Staff Band. So let's listen to this new piece, Streamlined. Thank you. 
In the always immortal words of Major Kevin Metcalf, he would, if you were here, he would say, Well, that was good. <laughs> would you like to encourage them again? Exploring new ways. That's just crazy stuff. Uh, well, the staff band's next piece uh, is called Inclusion. And it uh, wouldn't take much of a conversation for all of us to agree that we live in a very divided world right now. And so this piece speaks to that, and it uh, takes as its theme that everyone, no matter who they are, should feel included in our society in general, and in our churches in particular. The opening presents the theme in an isolated, exposed manner, and there's an early reference to the melody. When I needed a neighbor, were you there? An almost hostile presentation of the tune, Whosoever Heareth, is followed by a brief reference to, They shall come from the east, they shall come from the west. Leading to a sensitive middle section based on that wonderful tune, St. Peter. The words of John Oxenham, in Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. And the final section of the piece, closing triumphantly, depicts the joyful journey that takes place when everyone is included in the fellowship of God's people. We hope you enjoy inclusion.
Well, I should say it's, it's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be in Canada. Um, wonderful night last night at London Citadel. Uh, then this morning rehearsing for the Santa Claus Parade. Maybe not quite as nice as last night at London Citadel, but you know, it's all good. Um, but really, we're, we're so happy to be here um, and so, uh, so uh, just blessed to be on the same stage as the Canadian staff band. It doesn't happen that often uh, that we are able to get together. So it is truly a privilege to be here tonight in this place with these great people. Um, the next piece we're going to play is entitled The Wake Up the Saint. And it was written this past summer uh, for um, Starlight Music Camp, which is our territorial music camp. Martin Cordner was the guest. And he was going to write a, uh, a new big piece for Starlight Band that they would work on during the week. But he actually finished it during the week. He was mostly done when he got to camp and had to do a couple things and switch around a few things when he was there. Uh, but the idea um, around the piece, when we first started talking about it, um, was the idea of not letting a day go by without making a decision to follow Christ. Um, and to not, you know, not wait till, you know, don't wait till you're at youth councils or don't wait till you're someplace. You know, make the decision today. If you feel that, that you know, make that decision today. Um, so uh, that was kind of the, the theme for camp. Um, and it ended up being, you know, Wake Up the Saint, um, which is the actual title of the piece and it was for the week. But I'm just gonna read a little bit of the notes that he provides just to give you a little bit of background uh, on the piece and then I'll explain it a little bit. This music tells the story of a saint, a Christian, whose soul is asleep. You know the kind of person, attending church every week, involved in the core, maybe even leading a small group. They're giving up their time, but these efforts just prop up their dead faith. The heart of the saint is closed and not ready to meet Jesus. The piece opens with a large full band chord, a wake-up call to the saint. Just the knockings or sounds are heard. These describe recurring calls to the wake-up that Christians often experience through worship, song, and reading the word. But the soul of the saint is fast asleep, and the distractions of the world are allowed to get in the way of their relationship with Christ. In the music, these distractions are represented by whirling, turbulent phrases, and a recurring two-note motif in the lower band. Right, you get all that. <laughs> then, in a quiet moment of desperation, or perhaps in a dream, the saint calls out to God with an earnest prayer, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. The distractions of the world try to invade once more, but this time the saint is more defined. There is a second loud wake-up call, and the voices of other saints are heard calling, wake up, wake up the saint. With a cry of, Lord, I need you, the soul awakens, and triumphantly the saint sings. Like a bride waiting for her groom, will be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our king, we sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. So tonight, um, if, if you're that person that was described in that paragraph there, the person that's going through the motions, the person that's coming to the core, the person that maybe that's playing in the band, that's, you know, that's leading a Sunday school class, but, uh, but you're not right with the Lord, make today that day. Make today the day to follow Christ. Wake up the saint inside of you and follow him. This is Wake Up the Saint by Martin Porter.
We sincerely hope you're enjoying enough band music tonight. That's good, because there's more. Uh, this final uh, solo presentation for the Canadian Staff Band for the evening is a new piece by Kevin Larson. And thinking about tomorrow's Santa Claus Parade event, uh, we've been talking endlessly about Christmas comes to, it seems to come now even before Halloween. But uh, if we look past the parade tomorrow, we think of the first Sunday of Advent, Advent and the candle of hope. And this piece is called Hope. The people of Israel heard God's promises through the prophets. The prophet Isaiah spoke words of hope to Israel. He spoke of the coming of God's realm of Shalom when all nations will walk in God's light. We too hope and pray for a world of peace and harmony. So this new work is based on two songs. This will be a little Christmassy for you, just a hint of it here. As with gladness, men of old, but specifically verses 4 and 5. Holy Jesus, every day, keep us in the narrow way. And when earthly things are past, bring our ransomed souls at last. Where they need no star to guide, where no clouds thy glory hide. In the heavenly country bright, need they no created light. Thou its light, its joy its crown, thou its sun, which goes not down. There forever may we send alleluia to our king. The other song is the contemporary worship song, Cornerstone. Reuben Morgan, noted worship pastor and leader of the creative team of Hillsong Church, says, we can have confidence in Christ. We have a hope that doesn't fail. And this is the song that we'll finish with. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak and made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Hope.
We're going to play our last uh, solo piece for you now. Um, we will take an intermission after this. Hopefully it's only 10 minutes or so. We have to reset a whole bunch of things, so we'll try for 10 minutes, but it probably won't happen. Um, so the last piece we're going to play is uh, another one by uh, Marcus Venables. I uh, had one earlier um, by Marcus, but uh, this last one is called Endless Power. Um, and Marcus wrote it for us uh, during the summer. and. Um, and talking to him about uh, wanting to come up with a, a new piece for us, um, I sort of started to focus on the idea of the names of Jesus, um, the name of Jesus, and the power of Jesus' name. And so in, in this uh, piece, you'll hear a, a bunch of uh, tunes that represent all hail the power of Jesus' name, Jesus' name above all names, uh, the name, the name of Jesus, there's a whole bunch of them. You'll see the words uh, go by uh, on, the, on the screen as, as we're going. Um, but uh, for, for me now, um, I know in our, in our country at the moment, there's always a whole lot of things in the news. Um, some you don't ever really want to hear about um, because they're just stupid um, or ridiculous. I'm not sure, I probably shouldn't say that in the microphone, but you know, whatever. Um, but one of the things that's, that's happened recently um, in our country is a handful of uh, natural disasters. Uh, in Houston and, uh, and Puerto Rico, which is within our territory, um, huge hurricanes that went through. Um, and you know, we have some friends, uh, certainly, that, that live down there and know a lot of people that uh, live down in that area. And I think uh, the running total now is some around 65 days without power. Now, it's not everywhere, but you know, some friends that we have, some people that they work for the Army and, and our facilities, 65 days, and maybe more uh, now. Um, so that really gets to uh, think, uh, gets me to think about um, how, in our world, and in the things of the world, there's just not enough power. You can really only found, find the, the true power that you need to, to live your life and, and to go on from day to day in one place, and that's the name of Jesus. And um, that's just something that's really been really been tugging in my heart and in my mind for the last little while is that. Um, there's not enough, there's not enough power in the world provided by the world. There's not enough love in the world provided by the world. There's not enough grace in the world provided by the world. So if you want endless grace, endless love, endless anything, endless power, you can find that name of Jesus. So this is endless power and Marcus Adams.
Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, Ipsen Anspa, which is the International Bilateral Symposium of North American Northeastern Staff Bands. It's my pleasure to welcome you. <laughs> now, ref uh, reference has been made that uh, these bands have been together before, and of course that's true. The last time we were together, we were in California, and, and we stayed on the Queen Mary. Uh, we don't have a boat for us to stay on here tonight. But Rick Ellington's wife, Pat, said we could go back to his house and he'd open the pool and we could float around in his inflatable duck. Um, so we can do that if you like. So tonight we're here for a very special event. That is the pre-Black Friday Christmas Eve Boxing Day blowout, New Year's clear out, scratch and save, dent sale of CDs. Yes, we have CDs, and they are for sale. Now, there is some thought of that CDs are not relevant anymore. You can get things online. I totally disagree. Um, because with a CD, you play the music, you have a ready-made coaster for your coffin, and you have a, um, some information there that you can read in pictures. Do we have a picture? Oh. Isn't that nice? Some people think that's Steve Mansfield as a baby. <laughs> or last week. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, we've got CDs. They're out there. Uh, but before we uh, dismiss you, does anybody have a birthday here on Christmas Day? No Samuels. No Samuels. Ah, forget him. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody have a birthday today? This week passed. Come on up. Do we have a birthday, someone? Someone else? Come on up. We've got plenty. Come, come, come. Happy birthday. Another. We had you on another concert. Happy birthday. You got one more? Okay, you come and see me. I'll save you time. Okay? And everybody else, we've got CDs out there. Great deals. Come on out and say hi.
last piece was written by Dorothy Gates, uh, who is in the trombone section over there. Why don't you greet Dorothy? <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you guys came back for the second, uh, if you're joking, it's not a second half, it's like the last third, bottom third of the program tonight, but I hope you uh, are enjoying it thus far, and only a couple more things uh, to go, um, but uh, in this uh, situation, it's, I guess it's, it's nice because you, you come by people uh, that do the same thing as you, you're encouraged uh, by being around people that do the same thing, um, and, uh, and you're able also to look, look back and to see uh, how people have been faithful to this and how people have brought you along and all that uh, kind of stuff as we go through. So I just wonder, um, at this time, are there any alumni of, I'm sure there's more from the Canadian Staff Band, but Canadian Staff Band or the New York Staff Band here tonight? Please stand. To, to go someplace and play and, uh, and see uh, alumni of your group. You know, last night we were at London Citadel and we had a few alumni of the New York Staff Band that were there. I think three that were in the house uh, last night. Um, but just one other person uh, that we want to just acknowledge tonight that uh, is sort of a member of both of our groups, has done a lot of work uh, for both the New York Staff Band uh, and the Canadian Staff. And I just want you to agree, Ted Marshall. I'm not sure if we can even write down or keep track of how many times uh, Ted has done a recording for, for both of our groups, but it's a very long time for, for both of those ensembles. So um, his, his work and his ministry has been spread around the world more than, more than any of us up on this platform. Uh, so we thank you. Thank you for that. Um, but one, one last thing uh, we want, uh, want to do, um, it's not one last thing, but just at this time, uh, just in the last uh, few months, um, we've had several, um, we've had alumni of both groups uh, that, have, that have passed away, um, and we would like to dedicate this next item, uh, Reflections in Nature, uh, to uh, Mark Free, who is an alumni of the New York Staff Band. Uh, a lot of you would know his, uh, his compositions uh, that you've seen um, all over the place and all over the world. And the other one is Walt McCrudden, and uh, he played in the Canadian Staff Band uh, for, for a while, and we also have uh, Ryan, his son, uh, and the New York Staff Band. So this is Reflections in Nature for Mark Free and Walt McGregor.
We thank the combined bands for that beautiful piece and the tribute made for good friends. There may be some folks in the room who are English literature aficionados. There may be some who like a good Broadway musical. Or there may be some like me who have been known to stay up probably too late and watch an old movie. There's various ways to get, uh, to get some of those things into your, into your mind, and into your heart. One of those uh, things that you can catch in, in book form and in video and on stage is uh, the second novel by Charles Dickens, which is Oliver Twist. And it's, uh, it's a story, I think many of us in the room would recognize it, the story of Oliver who finds himself at a very young age as an orphan. He's been raised in a good home, he's, he's had everything he's needed, but suddenly he's thrust, literally, into an orphanage. And uh, my mind goes back in the story to his first morning, where he goes to breakfast with the rest of the rather scraggly looking orphans and they're all sitting at those really long tables and they all have a bowl and a spoon in front of them with a pitifully small portion of porridge or gruel or some, something and at their appointed time and not before the signal is given and they dive in and they devour that small portion of food and they lick the spoon and they lick the bowl and they lick the spoon again and Oliver, who is not used to such portions, looks down at his bowl, looks down at the big bowl of food that's down the hall, and he gets up out of his seat to the shock of all the other orphans. They can't believe that Oliver is getting up out of his chair and walking down that aisle toward the food, and they are just stunned. The staff are stunned. And you see him walking slowly down there with that empty bowl, and a hungry look in his eye, and he says those words, please, sir, I want some more. And immediately after that bold statement by the young orphan is the response, Oliver Twist has asked for more! Can you believe it? And then they start chasing him all over the room, if you remember that from, uh, from the, the movie scenes. Young Oliver, in that moment, didn't know it yet. But he was food insecure. Food insecure. That's a phrase that came into being in the late 70s. And that's defined as unable to consistently access or afford adequate food. And according to data released by the Department of Agriculture in the United States, 17% of Americans live in households that are food insecure meaning a family or an individual runs out of food before they have more money to buy it, or they run out of money to buy any more food. There's food insecurity. There are some of us in this room that know a little bit about that. We have a lot of multi-generations in this room, and I think of my grandparents and my parents, and I think of myself. I was raised as a one of five children in a single parent home, and I knew I wouldn't have called it like Oliver, food insecurity. I would have called it, there's not enough food in the house, and I'm hungry. And the reality of those stats, this concept of food insecurity, is one of those driving forces that William Booth type statement to go and do something to his son about the homeless and the hungry, and those words echo across the ages to us even today. Go and do something. It drives the mission and part of the Salvation Army to feed and clothe and shelter and take care of our fellow human beings. The scripture reading I'd like to share with you tonight reminds us of God's portion in our lives. Psalm 16, verses 5 to 11 says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. And with him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. 
Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. And he also says, and my body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. And in Psalm 119, 57, just another few verses, the psalmist writes again, you are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. You are my portion, Lord. And there's a song by Chris Tomlin that says this way, all of you is more than enough for all of me. For every thirst and every need, you satisfy me with your love. And all I have in you is more than enough. We pray that those around us would have more than enough to eat and we'll do our best to help supply the, those needs as God allows us to. But the beautiful reminder that we have of God is no matter what our station in life, He is our portion. And He is our Savior. He is our rock. He is our Redeemer. In Him will we put our trust. Father God, tonight we do thank you for the beautiful music that we've shared tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the songs that have been played, that have spoken of your love and your grace and your abundance and your provision. We thank you, Lord, for the songs that have talked about your rescue of us in our fallen state. We thank you, Lord, that the body of Christ is called into being by you to worship you, to serve you, and to serve those that you have placed on this earth. Father, we pray tonight that you would find us faithful in fulfilling all of the missions that you have placed before us. Lord, you are our portion, and that we find security, and that we find hope, and that we find eternal grace. Bless your people, Lord, as we march toward Advent, and we march toward the reminder that you have sent us a Savior who is more than enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, we thank you so much for, for coming tonight, and I hope you uh, enjoyed all that you heard tonight. And I hope, uh, above all else, uh, that you sensed that uh, our main goal tonight was to praise Jesus, and uh, hopefully you could feel that from us, and hopefully you could feel that uh, in your heart tonight. Uh, we're going to close uh, tonight's concert with the New York Staff Band's uh, traditional benediction, Rock of Ages.